Hello and welcome back to the PSD to HTML flat design build. We've made a lot of progress on our menu so far and now I want to get the text in place and as we mentioned before I want to make sure that this entire button is clickable not just the text itself. So in order to make that happen we need to define the width and height of our anchor tags of our links. Now a link is an inline element. So if you try to set the width and height of a link, it's not going to work unless you do one of a couple of things. You can either set it up as an inline block element or we can give it absolute positioning. And that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna give it absolute positioning within this button. Now if we give the link absolute positioning as it is right now, it's not gonna do what we want it to do because if we give it absolute positioning, that positioning is going to be relative to the browser as a whole. So if we give it absolute positioning and set it at a position of zero, zero, then it will put that text in the top left corner of the browser window. And that's not what we want. What we want is we want it to be absolutely positioned within that list item. So in order to make that happen, all we need to do is to give that list item a positioning of relative. And when you put an absolutely positioned element inside a relatively positioned element, then that absolute positioning will be relative to its parent. And this will make more sense once we start doing it. So let's jump back into our code. And we are now in the site 12 folder. So all the changes I make in this video will be saved in that folder. And I'm gonna scroll down in my main.css file to the main navigation section. And uh, let's go ahead and illustrate what I was talking about a moment ago. Let's say that we just wanted to go ahead and give our anchor tags absolute positioning. So we're creating a rule for the anchor tags that are inside list items that are inside our main nav. And we want to give those anchor tags absolute positioning. So I'm just going to set position to absolute. And then I'm just going to set top to zero pixels and left to zero pixels. And we'll see what happens. So let's save that, jump back into our file and refresh. And you'll see that all of our links have now been bunched up into the upper left hand corner of that unordered list. And the reason it's doing that instead of putting them all in the upper left hand corner of our website of our browser is because if you remember, we gave that unordered list a position of relative. If we go back into our code, we can see that right here. So if we put anything inside this unordered list with a position of absolute, that absolute positioning is going to be in the context of this unordered list because we gave that unordered list a position of relative. If we were to comment this out here so that it does not have a position of relative, save that and then refresh our page, then you'll notice that our links have all been moved up to the upper left hand corner of the browser window. But again, if we give that unordered list relative positioning, then anything inside it will be, or anything inside it that has a position of absolute will be placed in relation or in the context of that unordered list. Well, we wanna do that for our actual list items, not just for the unordered list. So I'm gonna to go to our list item here, this rule that we created before, and we're gonna give it a position of relative so that all the links inside those list items will be positioned within those list items, not within the unordered list. So once we've given our list items a position of relative, save our file, refresh our page, now you'll see that all of our text is now back where it started at the beginning of this video. The only difference is now that these links have absolute positioning, we can set the width and height of those links accordingly. So I'm going to temporarily again, give these links a background color of red. And by doing that, we can see, if we jump back into our page, we can see what the clickable area is going to be because our clickable area is defined by the width and height of that anchor tag. So we can see if we hover over any of that red background, then we can click and the link will be active in that area. And now that we've given it absolute positioning, we can set the width and height for that item. Also, if we get rid of top and left here, get rid of those two positioning items, save our file and refresh, you'll see that uh, they're in the top left corner by default. So we don't need those two properties there. So we've gotten rid of that. And now I wanna set the width and height. So the width for our anchor tags is going to be the same as the width for our list items, which is 140 pixels. Save that, refresh. Now we can see that it takes up the full width of the button that it's sitting on top of. And then we'll also give them a height 
of 70 pixels, which is the same height as our unordered list. So we'll save that and refresh our page, and there we go. So now let's get rid of, actually before we get rid of that, you'll notice that now when we hover over that background, anywhere in that red area, we now get the pointer cursor. So we've now basically made our links much larger than they originally were without messing with the text at all. So let's go back and get rid of that red background color. And now let's style the text a little bit. First of all, I wanna give the text a color of pound FFF. We're gonna make it white. I'm gonna bring up the font size a little bit. We'll make it 18 pixels. Then I wanna set some padding inside these list items so that our text will move down and to the right. But I don't want that padding to increase the width and height of our object. So in order to avoid the full width and height changing, I'm gonna set the box sizing property equal to border hyphen box. And then we can give it some padding. So we'll give it padding of 10 pixels. Save that and refresh. And we're getting a little bit closer. Let's go back to our CSS. And we don't really need padding around all sides. So what I'm gonna do, if we go back and look at our file here, I just wanna add some top padding here and then we'll center the text within these boxes so that the left and right padding will kind of take care of itself. So let's go back to our file and instead of just padding, we'll set padding top to 24 pixels. And that 24 pixels is just a number that I experimented with until I got it looking like I wanted it to look. And uh, so that'll get us there. And then I wanna set the text align property to center. So let's save that, refresh. And now our text is centered horizontally and by using top padding, we've also centered it vertically within those buttons. And now I want to put our text in all caps and get rid of the underline there. So let's go back to our file here. And under text align center, we'll also do text decoration and set it to none. So that gets rid of the underline. And then we'll also set text transform to uppercase. And that will make all of our text there uppercase. We'll save that refresh our page, and there we go. So now we're a lot closer to what we were going for. And we can double check that by hovering over any portion of that button, not just the text itself, but any portion of these buttons, we're getting that pointer cursor, which lets us know that we can click anywhere on that button in order to make it work. So now that we've got our links set up, in our next video, we're going to create a simple hover effect so that when we hover over each of these items, the background will lighten up just a little bit. So thank you for watching and I'll see you then.